He's one of the youngest CEOs in the Indian startup ecosystem. He started Oyo Rooms at the age of 19 and two years later, in August 2015, he secured $100 million in funding from SoftBank. What is it about Ritesh Agarwal that makes people want to bet on him? A college dropout, the only Indian to be offered a Thiel Fellowship and a man with a vision. There's a lot riding on whether or not Ritesh can chart Oyo Rooms' long-term growth story. Ritesh, thank you so much for joining us. Great to catch you on one of your uh, fleeting trips uh, to Mumbai. I know you've been very busy. Let's, uh, you know, hear the story from the beginning. Everyone's so curious about how somebody so young has just come out of left field and taken the industry by storm, really. So, to begin with, what does OYO stand for? So, for us, uh, the story has been pretty interesting yeah. ourselves. We never imagined this will become what it has a couple of years back. We aspire to solve a large problem. We're glad we've got an opportunity to do it at a bigger scale today. For me, uh, OYO actually means uh, on your own. Uh, it started by being independent. We realized that one of the big problems that Indians face when they travel is being independent, where uh, the travel is the easier part because of transport like that of rails, air, buses, and so on. But the larger problem is accommodations. Um, it's so funny that 14 times as many people in India stay with others' relatives instead of staying at hotels right. because they just can't find uh, good, decent places to stay at the right price. Right. So our problem statement was being able to solve that as, at as much scale as we could. And I'm glad we've reached to a right scale uh, to be doing the same thing. So is OYO, uh, Ritesh, synonymous with budget travel or are you now expanding the framework and is it encompassing a larger uh, variety of options for travellers? So I think it just got connoted right. as budget in the right. beginning. All, OYO has always aspired to be predictable stays, mm. which means that whichever quality of accommodation, whichever part of the country you stay in, you'll always get the right quality of accommodation yeah. at the most fair price in terms of uh, availability. It just so happened that the largest problem was in the budget in the mid-market segment and we continued focusing on it for a long time. Uh, while we are doing some experimentation at the at the uh, upper level, which is in the upmarket sort of properties, which are five stars and so on, but our focus continues to remain in the budget and the mid-market because majority of Indian population, the 400, 450 million people who travel in India, mostly travel in the budget and the mid-market segment. Okay, so we're going to get to the business metrics in a few moments. But first, uh, tell me, what is a consumer who's going in for an OYO room going to look for? What should they expect? So, you know, our brand promise is mostly three things. We stand for predictability, availability, which means you're going to be everywhere, right. and af affordability, which means whatever we deliver, it will be the right experience. Mm. If we double click into predictability, yeah. if you go on our web product, our mobile app, anywhere where OYO stands for, we talk about five key promise points, yeah. which include air conditioning, television, free Wi-Fi, free breakfast, spotless linen, and hygienic washrooms. This is in reality the biggest problem a consumer faces when they travel to a different city. So it's interesting you say that because you know one would assume that those things would be there yeah. in, in most hotels, yeah. right? Yeah. And you've had first-hand experience of this yeah. because yeah. you actually pretty much camped around and yeah. hopped around for quite some time yeah. uh, figuring this issue out. Talk to us about those experiences and you know how you actually decided that this uh, industry needed a solution. So I started with uh, something that was called Oravel. It was initially a booking system where people could book service apartments, guest houses, bed and breakfast and so on. When we started that and uh, I realized that the world's best companies are built by promoters pain points and I realized that what is the pain point that I had faced in this industry and I realized none of those things. So I felt the best way to figure out and solve a big problem was to actually go and experience it first hand. Right. So for three and a half months I would write emails to various B&B owners, service apartment owners saying let me stay for free because I want to solve a big thing in the industry. Right. All those owners who are now on OYO's network yeah. get subsidized take rates from right. OYO. Uh, but, but many of them were kind. For three and a half months I ended up staying in new properties every day. I realized that during this process of staying in places, 
The online reservation was the easiest part of the problem, which was discoverability. Right. The bigger problem was predictability. That is, when you land the city, you call the hotel owner, he won't pick up the phone. You reach at the hotel, there's no signage outside. You go inside, the reception is not available, and if he's available, half the lights are not working. You get in the room, the mattresses are torn. Next in the breakfast, it's of a different quality altogether. You can't pay by cards and so on. So end to end, the experience yeah. was broken. And I asked to myself that I was I was 19 then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at this age, do I want to build one more company or do I want to try and create an impact? My risk-taking ability was possibly at at the highest right. uh, peaks at that point of time. And you'd already dropped out of college, left home in Orissa, come to the big city, pretty much been thrown out of your uh, rental apartment anyway. Yeah. You slept on the stairs a couple of days. That's the story. Wow, I'm, I'm surprised <laughs> you know about that. So when you're talking about risk uh, taking capabilities, definitely yeah, at the I had nothing, point. I had yeah. nothing to lose, right? Yeah, absolutely. So for six months, my family felt I was actually going to college in Delhi. Uh, after which they realized I was not. Right. <laughs> uh, and, and, and the only thing that I had to explain and uh, turn them towards is saying there's no downside of not going to college for one year because there's so many people who take gap years. All right. So, what was the turning point for you when you actually felt that, okay, something's clicking, something's going to start working? Because as you said, from having nothing to lose to actually managing to form a business in itself is an achievement, even at the first initial level. So I think entrepreneurs have some, some yeah. one of these uh, things that's, that's called conviction. And for me, the conviction was there from day one. Uh, I did not have the conviction of building such a large network. I think we evolved into that. And then the capital just found you anyway, yeah, and, and yeah, quite a yeah, substantial yeah. sum that, that, that came in. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about that. But, but yeah, talk us through yeah. your mindset at that so time. So I think uh, two million rooms in this country are mostly owned by owners who have a different full-time job. Their aspiration to have this property is just a capital appreciation, which means their monthly uptake is not such a big deal. When we started this first property, here was the deal for the owner. So it was three months in, which, in which one of the hotels that I stayed in was this owner. Right. And hence, my deal to him was, you do 8% occupancy now. Yeah. I'm going to do 80% in the next six months. If I don't throw me out, if I do, we become partners. For him, it was the best thing ever that this guy <laughs> was going to come into my 11 room property yeah. and is going to be here 24 7 and ensure he does an uptake for my occupancy. Six months in, we had literally reinvented how hospitality would be looked globally. So, for example, housekeeping, we realized that for every 10 rooms, we needed one auditor to be able to track that the uh, toiletries, the pen, the pad, etc., were in the right yeah. place. We said it doesn't make any sense. We took all the toiletries, put them in a bag, and every customer who checked in, we gave them Just this gave bag. Them a bag. And right. now we could manage 1,000 rooms with four people, which otherwise would have needed 100 people. The kind of efficiencies you build by doing a lot, a lot of these things. Imagine, um, you know, when we talk about the pro property management system, what I mean is, if you see today's cab companies, mm. almost all the points of failure has been integrated into this mobile, yes. which were GPS systems, the billing machine, the printing machine, you know, all of these things were actually different machines which are today one of your mobile devices. We did the same thing with mobile. We said check in, check out, in room ordering of tea, coffee, etc. You can all do that by, the, by your mobile app. By means of which almost everything can be tracked centrally instead of uh, not, not knowing what's going on. So, what were the biggest uh, challenges or the, the resistance? Any mindset that you had to kind of break in order to get this going? Because it must have been a gradual transformation, yeah, yeah. right? At least in those early stages. Yeah. So, I think uh, very early. For hotel owners, uh, you know, the good news is yeah. what OYO is trying to do, they're not trying to change any behavior. The people who had a lot of real estate, there were people who wanted to get predictable experiences. Both of them existed in the market. We just are enabling the general user behavior to become bigger. So I think our long-term aspiration is that. But I think uh, as a hospitality brand gets created, every user will identify you as a different brand because we are a mass brand. Uh, you know, because um, a guy who comes in from a tier 3 town yeah. and is possibly reserving you from a mobile app and sees, sees the OYO's uh, board outside yeah. and sees the end-to-end -end brand integration in the hotel, it's a very different kind of an experience. Right. So I think it will take time, but over time you'll aspire to make OYO into the most loved hotel brand uh, across, across the globe. All right, on that note, we're going to take a very quick break. We're going to talk to Ritesh about what he's learned, uh, you know, in his experiences so far in the hospitality sector and also the business model behind the business. Back in a moment. Ritesh, let's talk business metrics now. Yeah. Everyone's wondering how does the, you know, OYO work uh, if you're 
selling rooms at these subsidized rates? Are you just burning investor cash and like, you know, eating up a huge chunk of the market, but it's going to just fall flat later because there's no actual business sense behind it. Tell us the model. So, um, you know, I think that's where my blazer comes into play. <laughs> possibly the first interview where I actually have a blazer on, on myself. But I think uh, it's, it's possibly because I'm going to meet an owner right after. I was surprised <laughs> to see it, but we're quite happy with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I, I look just fine. I think uh, we believe uh, we started the company with a very, very long-term sustainable premise. For 11 months, even though we had the capital, we, never, we chose to not go out of Gurgaon, which was our main business okay. destination. Because we said to ourselves, until we prove our business has strong EBITDA, PAT and take rates, yeah. we're not going to go out of the city. We proved that in one city, end to end, which is when we realized what we were doing makes a lot of sense and, uh, in terms of the broader experience, which is when we put the foot on the gas. Okay. We as a company believe we are more like a retail business, which has a 70-20-10 philosophy yeah. where 10% will be high street retail, 20% will be mid street and 70% will be low street. Uh, we make uh, a sizable amount of cash from the low street retail, which ends up going to fund uh, the, the high street retail. The good news is travel businesses globally are among the most profitable uh, businesses. If you look at Priceline stocks, if you look at any of these travel companies, you see they're the most cash rich, right. they're the highest take rates and they can get you know, because high internet penetration. If you look at internet penetration for e-commerce, even today the travel penetration is almost 2x right. of that of e-commerce. Even today, e-commerce and travel are almost equivalent in the kind of GMV they generate for businesses. For us, we also track very closely each city of us getting profitable over a period of time. And already a lot of our cities are profitable. So in terms of the the way forward and uh, in, in cities where let's say you've already uh, spread yourself over a huge chunk of the lower end market which is where the volumes come in yeah. what's the next step I mean is there a, a certain sense of saturation or is there still enough room at that level because you're also now starting to look at the higher end and yeah. hotels and and you've explained the model to me but but do the ratios stack up so higher end is in the long term also yeah. going to be a very very small percentage yeah because the budget and mid market demand is massive and the supply is very limited. Over the next year to two years, we see a very, very strong outlook in terms of supply creation for budget and mid-market because there's a huge demand. Our surge pricing comes into effect almost every alternate day right. in the budget and mid-market in all the top cities. Right. Because and when, when, when you say supply, you mean in terms of your tie-ups with all these hotels? Because yeah. there was just until maybe a year ago too much inventory in the yes. hotel space, yes. you know? So uh, we, are, we are trying to create entrepreneurs to be able to open up more supply. So you know, the kids who are getting right out of engineering colleges, business schools, etc., who are now being given a full-blown playbook okay. to start a hotel. We have partnered banks to be able to fund them and start hotels end-to-end. -end. And because OYO understands what business is gonna to come to that hotel, it's almost the risk for those guys. And for, and for a young guy who's just got out of business school, it's way more passionate to say you're a hotelier versus saying you're a driver. Uh, so, so that's where we edge uh, uh, Ola and Uber uh, uh, in terms of potential entrepreneurship. While I think, of course, Bhavish has created a great model and business yeah. around himself. And we are learning from uh, the inspiration they have created uh, in terms of creating entrepreneurs uh, by creating more uh, supply for yourself as well. So you're not looking at turning hotel owners yourself in terms of investing in already existing properties or setting up new properties, for instance? I think we, from the beginning of OYO, realized uh, uh, you should never do what you don't know. We don't know how to manage hotels, we don't know how to uh, uh, you know, construct hotels and so on. We're not real estate guys, we're hospitality right. and tech guys. Yeah. And, and we like focusing just there. You know, think about it on the back end, right? Why India's largest hotel brand um, in terms of units before OYO, now the number two, could never be the, the size of OYO is, even after existence for half a century. Yeah. Uh, the biggest problem is India as a market to operate a hotel between Kerala and Tamil Nadu yeah. is completely different. You have different land laws, you have different labor laws, you have different management formats, your electricity backup requirements are yeah, different. Everything's everything. different. You can't do it in a format by hiring people to do that. You will need a local micro entrepreneur to create value if you are to scale. Right. And what needs to be national is the brand and the quality promise and distribution abilities. Right. And we're doing just that. You say you're not a Real hotel estate. guy as such, but, but you spend so much time working through uh, in the processes, yeah. uh, you know, especially when you're starting the business from housekeeping to taking calls, you seem to have done it all. Yeah, so I think uh, one of the things that we realized 
was uh, for a combination of two reasons. One, to reinvent hospitality, you got you have to figure out what's happening today. Yeah. So that you know, because there might be places where you don't need to reinvent the wheel, yeah. where everything is going well, and there are places that you might need to reinvent the wheel, mm. which was one. And the second one was also to earn respect. Right. Uh, but you know, conversations with hotel partners mm. have become so much more mature today because every person who goes to partner hotel is equivalent or smarter than the hotel uh, owner where he sees that I can trust this guy with my hotel. Okay. Each person uh, who's um, our, our employee who goes and partners hotels, it's so funny, uh, one in two of those people uh, after the hotel gets partnered and drives 90% occupancy because of OYO uh, has uh, been offered to marry the owner's daughter because more <laughs> often than not, no. owner says that you drive 90% occupancy yeah. to my hotel you, you're the guy who understands the hotel business very well. Might as well manage the hotel of mine. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's just a uh, very, very important trait. It opens to, up a lot of options for you also. Your <laughs> parents must be very happy. <laughs> no, my parents, uh, funnily, even till date, yeah. consider me as a black sheep. Uh, because all my other siblings are well educated mm. and so on. So, you know, even on the breakfast table nowadays, yeah. with the TL Fellowship, I actually signed a contract that I won't go to college for two years. My mom still continues to say, is there a way you can get a degree but still not go to college because it can come on your bio data and we can marry you sooner. Uh, I come from a traditional right. Marwadi family okay. where, where, a lot, <laughs> where, where this is considered. My dad's pretty chill about it comparatively. So, you talked about the Thiel scholarship and um, I, I want to hear some of your experiences there also as an entrepreneur in terms of like perhaps what you found challenging about it uh, when they first approached you, the questions they asked and so forth and also I understand all ground experiences but you know you're sitting here talking to me about balance sheets and a beta and so forth and for someone who started off businesses at uh, 1920 how did you learn to do all of that? So for me uh, I think at a lot of levels a lot of this learning has been because I surrounded myself with extremely smart people um, just to give you some background, I think for the TL Fellowship, I actually never expected I'll become a fellow because before me there was no Asian resident or maybe Indian resident who had ever really? become a fellow. But for me the cool thing was you get to apply and answer questions that were amazing. So there were questions like those of if capital was not a problem, how would you change the world? I was like, this is what I was looking for. There were questions like, what's that one contrarian view that you have which nobody else uh, would believe in? And so on. So I started answering those questions and then we had multiple interviews, which was all happening by extremely smart people. One of them was with one of the smartest product managers at Facebook and so on. I realized that over this process, I was getting to meet such amazingly smart people and I wanted to spend more and more time with them. And one day I get this email saying, uh, you're among the top 1% applicants. Uh, we want you to come and pitch in front of uh, the broader TL community. Uh, that was, you know, for me, the coolest thing was, even then I believed that it won't happen. The only reason why I was so excited was it was the first time I was getting paid to actually <laughs> take a US trip. I was like, you know, first time in my life. And I got my passport then. I don't know if you, if you know no, this. No, I didn't I, know I got that. my first passport just to go for the TL Fellowship. Uh, and, and I had just eight days, I got a visa within that, can you beat that? Uh, wow. You don't get US visas so soon. But there were two big learning experiences for me at the fellowship. One was uh, thinking really big, as I told you earlier, for me, uh, very early during the lifetime, because everyone around you pushes you to be so conservative. Yeah, it's true. I almost started thinking to myself that I want to build a very small hotel thing in India. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Post that, the belief has been we'll build the world's largest hotel network uh, ever created. And the second thing was, you don't need to emulate something to be successful. We are creating something that doesn't exist in any other part of the world. And today, uh, they're close to 12 companies copying and emulating what Oyo has done I was just going to say that, yeah. In so many other countries. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, it's good to know that you're still taking things uh, lightly or, or able to have fun with it, Ritesh, and you're not being completely bogged down with, uh, you know, with all the responsibilities uh, that you have. But we're, in fact, going to get chatting to Ritesh about a lot more. We've still got lots to talk to him about. We need to take a very quick break. We'll be back in just a moment. Ritesh, I want to talk about how you add value. You know, we were just talking about competition, uh, the pressure to constantly stay ahead. You've now also got investors breathing down your neck. Uh, so, in terms of constantly finding ways to add value, how do you go about that? So, I think to begin with, uh, we feel uh, extremely glad to have partners who think very, very long term. Yeah. Our belief is you're building a consumer brand in India. Uh, and it doesn't take anything less than 20 years or, or around to be able to create a company like that. So our belief is when you're thinking so long term ahead, yeah. a lot of middle level uh, seasonalities that come in where people feel so excited about the business, come in and go out, uh, doesn't really affect us a lot. But I think uh, in the long term, 
it is very important to ensure that every guest has the best experience and every hotel has the best experience until these things are happening none of those things matter we've partnered with india's largest food delivery company we've partnered with uh, india's largest telecommunications provider our we have part we have our own cleaning vans right. who drive into hotels and clean the whole property up we have laundry facilities in places where we see linen as an issue i think a lot of infrastructure investments that we've done to be able to ensure each consumer who checks in into our hotels has the right quality of guest experience i think that is something that for consumers as well as for hotel partners adds significant amount of value and we will continue growing that bit okay in terms of uh investment as well of course softbank uh, the big one there amongst others are you uh, on track with uh, how you're using those funds uh, we were talking earlier about how there was always that little burst of excitement right after the funding but yeah. you pulled back after yeah. that but um, will you be needing more shortly or are you kind of on track with that for a while so um, at this point of time we are of course in track with our budgets and expectations internally as a company our belief is customer experience first because we are creating this company for a very very long time and the same process in terms of capital our belief is we will not require capital to continue building this company okay we might at some point of time raise significant capital for growth okay. for a significant amount of growth uh, in the future and that's the case uh, that's been the case with oyo all the time every time we've raised a round of capital it's not for sustaining current operations it's always been for the next level of growth for the company which is how it should be Okay. So then what is the next level of growth? Uh, and when is it? Is it still a while away? Is it 2-3 uh, years away you feel at the moment or is it going to be even sooner? I think uh, uh I leave a lot of these things to the market as well. Yeah. Uh my conviction says that it is somewhere in between. Uh where it where it is going to take time because we're building a long-term company and it's going to take a few months before uh we are at a place where we believe that it's time for the next level of growth because uh it's important to make sure that when you're growing you're always growing the right quality because it's very easy to grow and then realize oh by the way all my growth was crappy okay ritesh what is the kind of culture that you're trying to cultivate uh, in your business uh, with your team take us through that and i've i've also heard that you actually roam around barefoot in the office i don't know if that's true or yeah, not yeah <laughs> that's true i don't know uh, how how people get to know this but i'm glad people do <laughs> So I think uh I think we as a company uh, surpri- are surprising a little old school right. uh, especially assuming uh, my age but I think uh, it's also because the core fundamentals of the kind of people I surround myself with so we possibly have one of the smartest teams in India in terms of the quality of team we've created I know everyone tells you that but we have a very very strong culture of moving really fast but doing quality growth at the same time ensuring that we believe in humility and frugality in the down to the last core of our company all right so in terms of being a young ceo what are the biggest strengths and biggest weaknesses as well in terms of you must sometimes have to interact with people that may be slightly patronizing yeah. but on the other hand there must be advantages yeah. uh, so tell us about some of those you know very early i used to feel that people would actually think that age is such a massive problem but i think nowadays given the talent that you see out there uh, people realize that uh, smart work needs to be respected okay. versus all the other things in the new environment yeah. uh, the biggest risk any organization can take is not taking a risk Got it. uh so so that's that's sort of how i think about nice. it anything else you'd like to leave our young viewers with today in terms of takeaways you 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 have given uh, you know some gems of advice already yeah. during the course of the conversation but anything that even you learned from along the way so i think uh you know uh, around the current situation of market where we are in a lot of people might be concerned about what's happening with startups etc etc we have realized that india is the first time where there is value creation happening startups have a risk associated with it which is the reality right and which is which is what you see around yourself but there is real value to be created there is real problems to be solved and if you believe in doing all of those don't be concerned there is still a lot of value i mean 5 months 6 months earlier people were saying it is not as glorified as it looks like yeah. uh, uh, now that it is important for entrepreneurs to know that if you want to solve a real problem the time is now because quality entrepreneurs will get backing quality entrepreneurs will get respect in this environment because people will look at them and say this guy is building a real company in the short term and the mid term Right, Ritesh. Thank you so much for joining us on E Inc. It's absolute pleasure talking to you today. Thanks for having me here. All right, that's where we leave it uh, in conversation with Ritesh Agarwal. Uh, Oyo Rooms, uh, building one of India's possibly biggest startup stories. Uh, that's all from us this week. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.